Hi, I'm Aaron Douglas, Chief Dural from Battlestar Galactica, and I am talking to the Battlestar Galactica Museum. Body to the moon. So first question, an obvious one, how are you and how was the travel over to Germany? It's good. Uh, my back is killing me, so big long plane rides wasn't as much fun, but I'm here now and the beer helps. <laughs> What's your favorite beer? <laughs> oh, um, in Germany or just in general? In general. Uh, I like a really hoppy West Coast IPA. Yeah. Now, Fat Tug, if you're ever in Canada, in British Columbia, Fat Tug from Driftwood. Mm. Or amnesiac from Philips. Delish. Now you recently started in uh, the returns. How much of the original uh, Les Revenants did you see, and how much of that was included in the A and E storyline? <coughs> I did not see any of it. Uh, I, I purposefully w made a point of not watching it because I didn't want to inform my character about what that that guy had done. Um, and I think our storyline followed it pretty closely till about episode five or six, and then Carlton told me that it was gonna, they were gonna stop following the French version as closely and go, kind of go on their way. So I have no idea how the two shows differ. And for those who don't know the show or who haven't seen it, uh, can you tell us a bit more about the show and about your character? Uh, it was a very cool show and a very great show to work on. Uh, the um, these producers are just top of the top. Everything was great from the catering to the trailers and all the things that are important for actors. Um, it's a small mountain town in the Pacific Northwest where suddenly people who have died over the past sort of like 30 years just show up at the age that they died with the memories of everything that went down and the town has to deal with all of these people suddenly coming back. Uh, there's a character who was, had a twin sister and so she's still at the age she died, but seven years later, her twin sister is seven years older. And so how does that work? And uh, it, it explores really interesting themes of, of loss and what people would do if, if people do come back. Uh, and my character is Tony. Uh, his brother is one of the returned. And so Tony has to deal with his brother coming back and bad things that his brother had done in the past. And it was an interesting character to play because my character, Tony, is um, a little slow. So I wanted to get that right without coming off as campy. Uh, they wrote a lot of really fun, interesting stuff to do. And then, you know, as most of these shows do, kicked my ass at some point. And you were also recently on iZombie. Uh, that's a completely different show, obviously. It's a different show. Uh, what can you tell us about iZombie? iZombie was a lot of fun. I wish that that character would come back or could have been more than just the one day of shooting that I had. That was a lot of fun to play. I don't often get to play, sort of work in sort of the comedy realm. Um, yeah, that guy is a uh, misogynistic douchebag who has a radio show and he's just awful. Uh, so that was a lot of fun to play. The dialogue was great. The writing was so great. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's one that I wish I, I had a guest spot on, but that would have been a fun, fun character to recur. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. And now going over to uh, writing, because you, uh, you recently announced the project Infrared, which you wrote and yes. will also star in. Yes. What can you tell us about Infrared? <coughs> Infrared is... Um, it's... Uh, little brainchild of mine, uh, eight friends, been friends from high school, every year they go off for a week and go hunting up into the mountains and uh, so here we are 20, 25 years later and on this particular trip bad things happen, very bad things happen, that's all I'm going to say. 
And you've also recently wrote Snickersnacks Monster Stories. Oh yeah! Is writing something that's in your future or do you see, see yourself as a writer? Um, I, I didn't for, for the longest time and then uh, I wrote Infrared and I, and I sent it off to one of my agents and just said, just read this and tell me what you think. And uh, he came back, he read it, just was like, holy shit, you can write. I didn't realize. So well, I didn't. I didn't think I could either. Uh, but I really enjoyed it. I really enjoy that process. I have a lot of downtime as an actor because when you're not working, you literally have nothing to do. Uh, so writing's been a good uh, outlet for creativity. And uh, yeah, it was Teleria Press out of Seattle approached me. I guess about a year ago now, maybe a little bit more. And they they take authors and they build these anthologies. Everybody submits a bunch of short stories. And they, <clears throat> they knew that I was uh, sort of getting into writing and, and they asked me to submit uh, a couple of short stories in the, the monster theme. So I wrote these two things, submitted them, and they said, we love them, put them in the book. So they're in the book. And uh, they came back just a few months ago and said, we're doing another anthology, which is going to come out in the fall, and we'd like you to be a part of that. So can you write... Uh, a couple short stories with the theme villain. So that is going to be out, I think, in, I have a deadline of a couple of months, so it's probably like a September, October release. Now on to BSG, uh, because one of our Twitter followers, we do a question of the day about Battlestar Galactica, and he told us um, about when we, uh, we asked what are the worst things that happen to characters, and he told us Chief Tyrrell never got to be happy on Battlestar, because first Boomer was a Salon, then he got, uh, turned out to be the final five, and he wasn't really ever happy. Uh, what's your opinion on that? That guy's absolutely right. <laughs> Nothing. Well, <clears throat> I like the Chief's ending. I like the fact that he looked at the Cylons and said, screw you guys, and looked at the humans and said, screw you guys, and moved to Scotland, and uh, he makes scotch and builds castles and chases sheep around. Hello there, I'm Trisha Helfer, and you are listening, watching, reading Battlestar Galactica Museum. I'm Trisha Helfer, and I am here for the museum.